Hi, everybody. Um, we, this is Gil Pensack and myself, Ruth, we are wanting to have a conversation, or rather, I wanted to have a conversation today with, um, with my friend Gil, Gil Pensack, that many of you know, and some of you don't know at all. Uh, Gil lives in Israel. He's a native Israeli, uh, an Orthodox Jew, and we are doing a lot of work together. And um, it's uh, been an um, absolute amazing journey and continues to be an amazing journey. And even more so as we're able to share more openly and, uh, and uh, really tackle some of the, the, the more difficult questions sometimes that come up as we walk alongside one another as Christian and uh, Orthodox Jews. So um, this particular day, I really want to ask Gil about this thing that we are talking about right now as we've been listening to uh, this, this uh, song, this Jerusalem, this poem, of Yehuda Halevi and um, Gil, I, I just have this this real question in my heart, and it's it's more more than a question. It's a longing. It's an actual longing about this longing that the of the Jewish heart. It's it's a longing to communicate it, not just in our heads, not just something we read about or know about, but something that actually really takes hold of our our own hearts, so that. As we've been talking about, you know, Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort my people, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. How can we do that if, if we haven't, I believe, if we haven't touched this, uh, this longing, this Jewish longing? What is this? What's this longing for Jerusalem, this longing for Zion? Why? Why? What does it mean? Why is it there? And um, we, want, we want to understand it. We want to get it more. So let us know. <laughs> how much time do we, how much time have you got? <laughs> <As much as laughs> <you can. laughs> um, I think I, I think in order to answer the question, we have to divide it maybe to two let's say types of observations. Okay, there is there is the hypothetical observation and there is the practical realistic observation. Mm -hmm. and why why am I saying this? I'm saying this because. You know, usually when we study the scriptures, we, we, we have a tendency to maybe think about it as something which happened in another world. Okay, something which is disconnected from, from, from our reality in 2020. Yeah. Right, I mean, we don't, it's very hard to see the connections, but, but, and, 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 but, I think we mustn't study the scriptures as a history book. It's not a book of history. It's not about geography. It's not about ar archaeology. It's not about that at all. It's about the word of God. And the word of God is alive. And it continues to exist in every generation. It has been existing ever since. So, 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 that's, so we have to maybe break it down to two types of observations. Mm -hmm. the, the, let's say the theoretical one and the practical one. And we'll start with the theoretical one. Okay, if, if, if that's okay. Right. So in, in the concept, in the concept of this longing, we, we go, we go uh, way, way, way back uh, to Abraham. Abraham was given a calling in Genesis 12, go to the land that I will show you. So in the beginning, he came to the land, you know, just the borders of the land. Uh, he, he, he started to get to know the people living in the land. He, he was very powerful in the land. Then Isaac and Jacob, for them, it was quite different. But then after Jacob, the whole family leaves for Egypt, and they've been in Egypt for hundreds of years of slavery. When, when God decides to, to, to take them out, to bring them out, out of, to bring them out of slavery and, and to fulfill and to keep his promise to Abraham, um, uh, he, he, it's not, for no, it's, it's, it's not for, for no purpose. There is a purpose for that. And mm -hmm. the purpose is for them to leave Egypt, become a nation, and to come to this land not any other land they had to walk in the wilderness for 40 years by the way their own responsibility because it should have taken them 11 days so it says in deuteronomy but fine it took them 40 years to uh, to walk through the wilderness from egypt to here and to act, in the end to enter into the land along with joshua joshua the, the prophet and start occupying the land 
the process of, of, of occupation and other occupation in nowadays might have a political aspect, but let's leave the political side. Let's put it aside. Mm -hmm. but, but, but the occupation, the process of occupying the land with Joshua was about cleansing the land, rev a, 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 a purifying the land. The land was full of idol worshiping, was full of it. And God said, you must go there and you must cleanse the land. You have to clean it. This land is my land and I want you to do this for me. Okay, it's not like God couldn't do it himself. Clearly he could, but there was something, there was something about us doing that actively and not, and not the land being handed over to us already. You know, everything is ready and all set and, and all the enemies are out. No, we, have to, we had to fight for the land right from the beginning. That's clearly part of, the, of God's plan. Now, so there is a nation, and that nation has a land. Now, this nation is also uh, committed to keep all the rules of all the laws that God has in Torah for us. We have 613 laws. Some of them, just so, just so we get the concept, but some of them are totally restricted, totally connected and totally restricted to only when we live in the land. Only to when we live in there. For example, the most famous one that you all know, I'm sure, uh, the seventh year, right? We, we, we may work in the land for six years. The, the, the land would, would yield its produce. But then on the seventh year, no work to be done. Okay? And it corresponds, of course, with the seventh day of the week when God rested, then the seventh year for the land. Whatever, we don't have to go into it. But, 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 but the point is that the seventh year is only to be kept when we live in the land. And that's part of, of, of the mechanism, that's part of the laws we received from him to live our lives as his own people. That means that if we live outside of the land, if a Jew lives outside of the borders of Israel, he cannot maximize his potential as part of the chosen people. There is a set of laws, there is a set of rules which he was give, which, which was given to him, and he just cannot access those laws because he's not in his right place. Mm. Being in the land is another piece that makes the picture complete for us. Mm. It's like it's it, it's like think about a, a a body. If and the body is complete now. When when the body when, when the body is complete for us, that means that the nation is all united, living in the land. There is a kingdom. There is Mashiach. There is a temple. Mm. The body is complete. If, if a Jew decides to live outside of the borders of Israel, then one organ is missing from the body. Okay, we, we see that, we see that happening a little bit in the book of Ruth. How, how is it that right at the beginning, a guy called Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, he decides to leave Bethlehem and to go to live in Moab, in the country of Moab. Why? Because, it, because there was famine in the land and Elimelech is a wealthy man, he had to provide for the poor. And there is a specific way to provide for the poor, in, in, according to, to Torah. You have, if you have a field, you mustn't touch the corners of the field. Whatever grows in the, in, in the four corners, in the four edges, you mustn't touch it. It's for the poor. Elimelech did not want to provide for the poor in such a time of famine. So he went to live in the country of Moab, in a place where he will not be committed to do that. And he'll be able to continue uh, 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 to collect his own, his own personal wealth, which of course is negative. We don't see it in a positive way. Wow. So that's just a little bit about the connection. Now, the, uh, we have the land, you know, the land of Judah, late now the land of Israel. We have Zion, you know, it's, it may be called the land of Zion or Zion is the city of Zion, which is, which is, uh, which is uh, Jerusalem. The name Zion in Hebrew is Zion. And Zion comes from the word Metsuyan, excellent. Excellent. Zion excels in, in, in quality, in, 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 in high, very high spiritual, um, very high spirituality, very high spiritual level. Okay, that's, that's the name Zion. God, from the beginning, God had chosen this land. And in this land, there is a very specific city that he chose. For, the, for, for his house to be, where he wanted his house to be built. And in the city, there is a specific mountain. 
And on the mountain, there is a specific point. Mm -hmm. And that's where God wanted his house from the beginning. That's where God resided his name. Do we really understand what that means? Mm. Do we really understand, you know, we have, when, I, when, we, when we think about the name of God, we, we imagine letters, because that's what we have. We, we imagine the name, the Hebrew letters, the English letters, whatever, but, but we imagine letters and name like Gil or Ruth. But residing his name, reside, God residing his name is not about the letters only. It's not about a written word, a written name. It's about a tangible presence of him in this world. Him, he, he has no form, no body. He's way beyond anything we can ever imagine or, ex or, or, or understand. Mm. We have no concept of what, what he's like. We can't. We, we can't with our limited brains. And, and that's what it was. In Song of Songs, King Solomon describes uh, uh, the king has brought me into his chambers. The king brought me to his home, the place where, 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 him, where he and I will be united. Mm -hmm. there, is, there, is, there is a bedroom in that house and there is a bed inside, which is the Ark of the Covenant. It's a very, very intimate place. And without that place, we have no full existence as a nation as individuals and as a nation that's that's in the theoretical aspect and that's and you're, you're really talking about the corporate the corporate longing aren't you it's not um we're not talking so i mean the individual obviously is within that body of of people that are longing but it's more the the overall longing of the jewish people it has to be it well, has to be the overall and the corporate. Otherwise, otherwise, why would why is Jerusalem the capital city of Israel today in 2020? So, what about what about that individual longing that we've just heard about in in this poem of Yehuda Halevi? That you know, I mean, you know, he's he's in the west. His heart is in the east. He's looking towards he's looking towards Jerusalem in his heart, longing to be there. Um, what what would make somebody like Yehuda Halevi? write such a thing? What is, what is that? The uh, Rabbi Yehuda Levi, uh, he was a very big rabbi in, in his days, you know, the 11th century, something like that. And he used to, he lived in Spain, in south of Spain, which was in the hands of, of, of it, was a, it was a Muslim uh, uh, area. And the north was Christian and the south was, uh, was Muslim. And, and Rabbi Yehuda Levi, I mean, he wrote many, not just poems, but he wrote a lot of Jewish philosophy and, and really a lot of teaching, a very wise man. He was a righteous man. Mm. And, and in Judaism, we say that the, the more righteous one is, the, the more corporate his soul and less individualistic his soul is. So when he writes, his soul grows. I mean, the righteous person has a soul that grows along with his spirituality. So, and, and it connects to the corporate soul, to the national soul of the nation of Israel. So, so the thing that he's, that he's describing, the thing that he's experiencing, that comes from the, the national soul, so to speak. Mm. We, really, we really call it like that. Hanefesh Haleumit, the national soul. Mm. And he's totally connected to that place. But, but of course, as an individual as well. Of course, also as an individual. Now, some people... We would say that some people would feel it more, some people would feel it less. It's all a matter of how, how, how spiritual their observation is. And the more spiritual it is, the, the more they are connected to the overall general soul of the nation. And they take it from there. So, so um, are we talking about, because I'm trying to, to make this, this connection between um, what I'm seeing is, is, is kind of like redemption. We're talking, are we talking about redemption? Is that belonging? It's not just that. It's, um, how would you define the love for your mom? <laughs> um, the love for your mom. Would you define your love, the love and the yearning, the longing for your mom who, who, who passed away? Would you define it as, as redemption? Would you define it as, as no. just love? Would we define her being missing? Would, um, it's, it's the whole sense of home. 
which we are talking about and this right. this i think this 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 emotion is beyond words sometimes yes how do you define the way you feel when you are really home mm -hmm. how do you how do you depict it in words how do you depict it in in color or music or anything the, the means with the means we've got from god how do we really depict it it's very difficult because it is so i think the word in english is maybe innate Yes. Like it is so inner, it is so yes. part of who we are, it's so, in, it's so much integrated, it's part of who we are, it's so hard to depict it in words. Is it, is but, it, but, a, little, but, is it a little bit like, um, you know, when you think of home, it's like when you're home, you, you want to go home, it's because you want everything to be right, you want everything to be, you know, you feel, hopefully, you feel safe. Um, it's like where you belong. Exactly, but it's not. But but it's not necessarily about everything being right. Maybe you have problems at home. You know, in psychology, in psychology, a, a children who were neglected by their parents, and and I know because my wife worked with this with this kind of population for a long time. She worked. She used to work with children coming from horrible backgrounds, family backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Parents, really, I mean, really, I mean, there is a reason why they are the parents of the child, for sure. It's very difficult for us as human beings to see how, you know, they don't have the right to be the parent of that child. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if I may say, in, in a human way, I'm talking about it. And, and you see that, no, it's, it doesn't matter how many, how, how many problems they have at home, how terrible the situation is. When the, when the child is in a boarding school, all he talks about is going back home. He wants to go back home. Mm. It's not about everything being right, but this is where you were, where, where you were conceived, so to speak. Right. It's, it's the initial place. That's where the nuclear is. And, uh, and, for, and you talked about the sense of belonging, for sure. We have no other place. We, we don't belong anywhere else. Anywhere else. And history shows that. It's, we yeah. don't have, I mean, really, I mean, anybody reading a chapter or two in history, in Jewish history, knows that that's really the case. Now, that's that's in, that's in the theoretical aspect. In the practical aspect, we have to realize that, I mean, I mean, for me, I was born here. Okay, I'm 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 20 years old, of course. Right. And, uh, so so I was right. Now I was I was I was born here. I I was I was I was born here, and uh, and and for me, the yearning for Zion exists as well yeah, that's but, it is, it is not, but it is not but it is not like the yearning for zion for uh, for somebody else my age let's say uh, who was born somewhere else outside of the country not the same thing his experience is not like my experience right. his experience much is much is much more raw so to speak, okay if i may use the word mm -hmm. it's uh he's his yearning is more to the to the concept, the big concept of of returning to Zion, living in Zion, speaking the language, being part of the nation, that's not my experience. My experience is is more advanced. My yearning, because I've done that. I mean, I was born here. I speak the language. I'm part of the people. I mean, I'm, I mean, I have all that already ticked on my checklist. Mm -hmm. For me, the for me, the next thing to yearn for is the next stage in the process. Which is the rebuilding, rebuilding Jerusalem. Jerusalem, not not just the modern city as we see it today, but but really the the, the Jerusalem, the mountain, uh -huh. having the kingdom, having the kingdom, having God's sovereignty, having His name being present on the mountain. That's my next thing on on in the journey. So the so so a Jew living in Israel today, 2020. And a Jew living outside of Israel, it's not the same experience. Right. They 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 might they might they might define it in the same terminology, but 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 the way they are in the process, that's not really the same. Interesting. Okay, so 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 uh, so that's that's in, in the practical aspect. So for me, there is still yearning for Zion. There is still yeah. yearning for 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 the king, for sure. It's not just the land as like the geographical borders of the land. Mm -hmm. It's the land being redeemed, fully redeemed. Yeah. Now, I'm not underestimating the place where we are now. We're in a wonderful place. Looking back, looking back at the generation of my grandparents, 
have grandparents who came from Poland and they went through the Holocaust, and I have grandparents who came from Iraq. Okay, in, in 1940, in 1951, they came. And, and um, so, so our situation, our condition here is way more advanced, is way improved than, the, the, than, than what they experience. Right. Okay, so we are definitely moving forward in huge steps. It's not just like the tiny, tiny steps, you know, like baby steps. Huge steps. Right. Me and my grandparents, it's not that, it's not that, not that of a long time. Uh, right. It's not such a long time. I mean, you know, the, my grandparents uh, died uh, in the, uh, some in the 70s, some in the 80s. Not a long time. Right. I was born in the 90s, you know, it's... Uh, Late 90s. Yeah, right. It's not the no reason really... that your name is Gil, right? <laughs> Meaning age in, yeah, which means, in Hebrew. Yeah, which means, very but it also means joy. Joy. Well, you have both, so it's good. So, so that's that's uh, and so that's just a little bit about about this sense of uh, of, of of yearning. It's it's uh -huh. a, it's an it's an ongoing thing, and and and. And I and I, I might suspect just to make maybe the picture maybe a bit more maybe a bit broader, but I might suspect that King Solomon, who built First Temple and and, and initiated the, the you know and he was in he initiated the, the, the temple and uh, and fire fell from heaven as he was praying and consumed the sacrifice. I believe that he had that yearning as well for Zion, but he was more advanced. So his yearning was about Holy of Holies. His yearning was about Day of Atonement when the high priest used to go in mm -hmm. and come out and atonement was given to the people and people could feel and see the tangible presence of God. Mm -hmm. That's what they were yearning for. I am far, I'm far behind them. I haven't experienced that. And I think, so, you know, I, mean, I, you are on I think as Christians too, um, I know for myself, I think the only time I can really uh really feel that i connect with this yearning is actually when i find myself in in time in a time of worship or or of, yeah in a time of worship where you you just you feel like you're just touching just the edge of something and it makes you so long for more you know you want i want to go i, I want to touch god's heart i want to touch his presence like more to really touch it more and so I, that's, for me, that's where, I've, where I feel that longing. And then when I read of it and I hear you and I hear you speaking and it really, uh, it really touches my heart. And I, I really pray that all of our hearts will be, will be touched in that way. But can I, can, may I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. You can. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just a, a direct question. Okay. Uh -huh. it's, uh, I hope you don't find it as chutzpah, but, but my question is, what do you care? I mean, why would you care about it? I mean, why would you care about this yearning of of uh, of, of another nation to 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 its country? Um, <coughs> do you know? What I'm I mean, I mean, where? Do, I mean, for sure. I mean, if you care, then I believe you see yourself somewhere in that picture. But but why? You know, that's well. I I think um, I can only speak personally, obviously. Um, that as, as God touches, has touched and continues to touch my heart and, um, and that I suppose that started when I was writing the Oratorio Terrors in, and just the Holocaust, touching the Holocaust. I think that was, that was the entry point for me because in, not only did I touch the pain of the Holocaust, but I touched the longing to see something coming out of it and I saw something coming out of it um that is so you know I, I long for that i long to see that redemption of of um of the jewish people of, of your people and and not only long for it but i long to walk alongside you in it just and i can't walk alongside you in it if i don't understand this longing and if i don't touch it and and in a sense asking god give me that longing Give, really give me that longing that I care as a non-Jew that I could care as much as you do about these things. That's my heart. And so it, it's, uh, 
I just say, Lord, I want more. I want, I want more of that. Um, I want you to give me more, more of your heart, more of your heart. So that's uh, for us to even walk on this journey together. It's, it's got to, uh, um, it has to go deeper, it has to go deeper. It can't be a shallow thing. No, definitely not. It just can't definitely. be. So, hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Gil. And, thank you. Uh, it's, it's so great it's so great to hear your heart and um and i'm sure everyone really thank you for the opportunity to share okay bless you bye-bye bye-bye <laughs>